let's look at backend languages. So the front end had HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which were the structure, looks, and functionality. The backend language, well, there are actually a lot of backend languages. There's Python, PHP, Java, .NET, Ruby, and actually, even though JavaScript is a front end language, it's also a backend language. So here at Udacity, we have the full stack nanodegree program, and in the full stack nanodegree program, we cover Python as our backend language. And here is some Python code. And we can see that this is a programming language, just like JavaScript. And here we have an if statement, which will again do that flow control, where if something is true, then do something else. So here it is in Python, where we have if, then some code, and then it'll print the word last off. So what does a backend language do? Why would you want to pick a backend language? Backend languages do data processing. They determine what files to send. They determine what content to put in those files and they help build up the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that get sent back to the front end. So they do a lot of this data management and getting information and packaging up the information and then sending it back to the front end. So seeing the big picture again, a user is sitting at their computer and they pull up a website. In the back somewhere out in the world is a server. Your browser requests some information from that server the server does its thing and chugs away at getting the information and processing it, and then it sends a response back to the user, back to the front end to get displayed. So for this section, we looked at front end versus back end. Then we looked at some of the back end languages, which are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we looked at uh, that there were a number of back end languages, with the primary one for us here at Udacity as Python.